Welcome to another review by Figures for it. In this review, we will be reviewing three figures simultaneously. The figure to the far left is Ultraman, an evil version of Superman from Earth 3, who is part of an evil version of the Justice League known as the Crime Syndicate. The figure in the middle is General Zod from DC's Rebirth Continuity, and the figure to the far right is the Martian Manhunter, also from DC's Rebirth Continuity. The first aspect of these figures that we will be taking a look at is their accessories. Now, as you can see, Ultraman has the most accessories. In addition to the standard stand and informational card that comes with all DC Multiverse figures, he also comes with these two additional figures, or should I say this additional figure and this part of an additional figure. Now, why do I say part? That's because this is part of what is known as a build and connect toy or build and connect figure. Now, what you have to do is buy the other figures in the wave or series to which this figure belongs, which will come with the other parts, and you combine them to form the overall Build and Connect figure. Now, this will form Starro. Starro is a psychic alien starfish who is a major villain in DC Comics. In fact, he was the villain of the recent Suicide Squad movie, or should I say the most recent Suicide Squad movie, or at least the most recent live-action one. I don't know if an animated one has been released since then. I don't think so. But uh, whatever the case may be, definitely the most recent live-action Suicide Squad movie had Starro as the main villain. Now, this here is a minion of Starro, which latches onto a host like so. So we'll just put him onto the figure like this. And so he latches onto a host, and he overtakes their consciousness and allows Starro to control that host control that person because the minion here is part of a collective consciousness uh, of which Starro is the overseer or master uh, so to speak or at least the central figurative nerve in that neural network if you want to think of it that way so let's take a look at the collectible card that comes with it as you can see, it has a photo of Ultraman about to punch Starro. So I'm assuming this is what the finished Build and Connect will look like. It'll be quite large, which is pretty neat. I'm really looking forward to uh, building that. And I'm really looking forward to finding out who the other figures in the wave will be. Because at this point, it's a mystery. I don't believe anyone knows. So that's pretty neat. At the bottom, it says Superman of Earth 3, Crime Syndicate. And on the back, you get a biography of this Superman. So you can pause the video to read that if you'd like. Pretty cool. So let's put that down. And now we are moving on to General Zod of DC's Rebirth continuity. Now General Zod is an evil Kryptonian who wants to either wipe out all humanity or enslave all humanity and pretty much introduce a new generation of Kryptonians who will overtake the Earth. At least that's his agenda in the Man of Steel live action movie and in some other uh, narratives featuring the character. I'm not sure if that's his agenda in all uh, narratives featuring the character, but that's that. And this is the collectible card that comes with him. As you can see, it has a photo of him, which is pretty neat. And on the bottom, it says General Zod, DC Rebirth. And on the back, you get the biography of General Zod, so you can pause the video to read that. And finally, we have the Martian Manhunter. The Martian Manhunter is a humanoid alien who can shapeshift, and he's from the planet Mars, and he has all sorts of powers. Super strength, uh, super speed, uh, I believe he can become invisible, uh, he can shapeshift. Yeah, he has quite a few abilities. Uh, he's quite powerful. And this is the trading card that comes with him. As you can see, it has a photo of the figure with somewhat illuminated eyes. The actual figure does not have illuminating eyes, but that would be cool if it did. And on the bottom, it says Martian Manhunter, DC Rebirth. And on the back, you get his biography. So you can pause the video if you'd like to read that. So now we are going to measure the heights of these figures to see if they are in scale. Now this is Ultraman who is a version of Superman who is typically 6 feet 3 inches tall. Now 6 feet 3 inches tall is equal to 75 inches. 75 inches divided by 10 in order to scale it down to 1 tenth scale 
is 7.5 inches. So this figure should be 7.5 inches tall to be exact. But is it that tall? No, it is seven and one fourth of an inch. So it's slightly shorter than it should be, but that's close enough. I'm content with that. I'm gonna say it is roughly speaking in scale. So let's put him to the side. Now, based on information that I've looked up, General Zod is the same height, six feet three. So he should be the same height. But let's see, he is also seven and one fourth of an inch. So he's also roughly in scale, slightly shorter than he should be, but still roughly in scale. Now this guy here, Martian Manhunter, according to sources that I've researched, he is six feet seven in the comics. Now six feet is 72 inches, 72 plus seven inches, should I say 72 inches plus seven inches is 79 inches. So he should scale down to 7.9 inches. So that should be somewhere close to eight inches in height. But obviously he's nowhere that, that height. In fact, he's a little shorter than uh, Ultraman and General Zod. So he's definitely out of scale. But hey, keep in mind, he is a shapeshifter. So, you know, you can say that he doesn't really have a true height. He can change his height around. So now we are going to assess the articulation of these figures, starting off with Ultraman. So let's take a look at his head. He has 360 degrees of rotation. He can tilt his head to the sides by this degree, which is pretty good. He can look up by only that degree. I've seen better. And, you know, considering that you'd want to put him in a flight pose, that's not very good because he can't really look forward when flying, which kind of blows. And when it comes to looking down, not much range, barely, barely any more than looking straight forward. You know, I would consider much more than that to be decent, but that's not what we have. So unfortunately, I'm going to say the articulation of the head is just okay. You know, he definitely needs more range looking up for flying positions and more range for looking down just in general. It's just not very good. Now, if you were to combine his uh, tilt upwards with his diaphragm joint, I guess that could help quite a bit. Let me see, but that does look a bit unnatural if you want to put him in a flying position. Let me see, I take, uh, I take that back. I guess when you com combine the head articulation when you know facing upwards with his uh, diaphragm joint, you can put him in a pretty decent flying pose. So I'm going to forgive the limited articulation of the head when looking up because of the diaphragm joint. You can put him in a pretty decent flying pose. But looking down, that is pretty limited. I would expect more. But once again, when you factor in the diaphragm joint, you can, you know, accommodate that. You can compensate for that uh, minimal degree of articulation. So the diaphragm joint saves the limited range of the head when looking up and down. Now let's take a look at the arms. We have 360 degrees at the shoulders on both, obviously. Uh, if we want to have his arms bend inward, we get this much range upwards, that much range. His hands cannot, actually, wait a minute, can his hands touch? Let me back up. If you were to bend his elbows, you can get his hands to touch a bit. I have to turn the biceps. He does have bicep swivel. And you can get his hands to touch it, but you have to put them together. They don't stay that way, but that's pretty decent. I've got to say he has some pretty big, doofy-looking hands, but still a pretty cool-looking figure overall. So obviously, as I just demonstrated, he does have bicep swivel. As you can see, he has it on both arms, which is pretty good. Um, however, I do want to demonstrate, or should I say test out the butterfly joints before I move on further down the arms. As is the case with most McFarlane figures, the butterfly joints don't seem to really help much. They're kind of useless, no offense. They don't even flex all that much. They don't really add any range to the arm movement, so uh, the butterfly joints are disappointing. He does have 
double jointed elbows, which is pretty neat. But as is the case with pretty much all McFarlane's, they do look pretty gnarly from certain angles, so keep that in mind. But hey, this was a cheap $20 figure, so you get what you pay for. Overall, I still think the, the figure looks pretty good. It's not as if I paid 90 bucks for it. If I did, then I would have an issue, but pretty good, especially considering the price point. So let's take a look at the wrists. So this is the default position of his left hand, which is on your right. I want to bend it inward. Hold on a second there. I'm not getting much range I'm along the correct axis. There we go. So that's the default position. This is inwards. This is outwards. So really good range, but the ball joint is pretty large and obvious. I've heard a lot of people complain about that, but hey, at this point, you know what you're getting when you buy a McFarlane toy. Let's test out the right hand. Should I say the right wrist? Hold on a second here. It's pretty tight. Got to break it in. There we go. So that's inwards. And that's outwards. So pretty good articulation at the wrists. Now, unfortunately, he comes with only this one pair of hands, which are in the form of fists. But if you have enough McFarlane figures, uh, you can pretty much use uh, additional hands that have come, or should I say that came with other figures in your collection. I can't find them at the moment, but I know I do have some alternate hands that came with another Superman figure, if you want to consider this a Superman figure, uh, that can obviously be swapped with these. So I'll just use those if I want to depict him with open palms, etc. So that's not an issue if, for someone who collects quite a few of these. Now let's take a look at the diaphragm joint to the side. You get that much range, so quite a bit of range. Backwards, you get that much range. That's a lot of range. That's really good. Uh, as I demonstrated earlier, that will help you achieve a flight pose with him looking forward, which is pretty good. Downwards, you get that much range. So pretty good diaphragm joint all around. You can rotate him 360 degrees on the joint. Pretty good. Let's take a look at the waist. You get that much range. Pretty good. Uh, that much range going back, which is also really good. So he has some really good articulation Really good articulation. They really put quite a bit of effort into making sure his body is articulate very nice uh, Can you rotate at the waist? Yes, you can So fantastic articulation thus far minus the movement along the vertical axis of the head But remember the diaphragm joint compensates for that. So still pretty good overall now for the legs at the waist, you can pretty much get 90 degrees, but the legs do protrude to the sides. So keep that in mind. That's pretty much the case with all McFarlane's. If you want to bend his legs backwards, you get that much range. You can get a full 90 degrees because uh, he doesn't have the really soft diaper that a lot of figures have. I mean, it is soft, but... Um, I guess it's not soft enough. You do get a bit of resistance when you bend the leg backwards. Now, uh, like, like is the case, or should I say, such is the case with all McFarlane's. He has double jointed knees, really good. So you can put him in some pretty cool poses. So far, I'm pretty impressed with this figure in terms of the articulation, and I really like the sculpt. It, like most McFarlane figures, it doesn't look too appealing in, in the advertising. Uh, photos, or should I say the advertisement photos, but when you get it in person, it looks really good. You know, it's quite a good looking figure in person. I really like it. Now let's take a look at the ankle joints. That's the default position. That's down. Really good. Default position. This is up. Really good. And of course you have toe pivot. So overall, I'm quite impressed with the articulation of this figure. Really, really good articulation. Uh, I don't have a stand. This didn't come with a stand, but I do have uh, a few other McFarlane stands that came with some of my other figures, but I have them put away at the moment. I just wanted to show him in a flight pose on a stand. Give me a second here. Here's um, 
Justice League Superman, Henry Cavill version. I'm going to take the stand from him. Uh, I guess I can put it like this. There we go. So here is Ultraman on a DC Multiverse stand that comes with certain flying characters from the DC Multiverse line of Todd McFarlane. So if you have an additional stand, you can put Ultraman on the stand like this and depict him flying. This looks pretty damn cool. So yeah, uh, I'm really liking this Ultraman figure a lot. Uh, it's amazing. I saw it in photos and I thought it looked horrible. When you see it in person, it looks really good. And it's quite articulate, as I've shown. And you can put it into this really cool flying pose. I mean, it just looks so beautiful. A very cool figure. So that's that. Let's get him off the stand. Back into a standing position. In fact, I'll just put him into a position like that, where he's putting his fist against his, his waist, against his hips, I should say. There we go. So, yeah, that's that. Ultraman. That's his articulation. Uh, before I move him back to where I got him from, that's just how they stack up together. Now, let me unbend his legs so you can see just how tall he is compared to Ultraman. Yeah, they're about the same size. Actually, the Henry Cavill figure is a bit taller. At least the top of the hairline is. Um, let me see. Yeah, he is He is a bit taller. As you can see, there's a, there's a slant. So the Henry Cavill Superman figure is taller. In fact, I've observed that pretty much all of the live-action Justice League figures are taller than the comic figures uh, made by Todd McFarlane as part of the DC Multiverse line. I don't know why that's the case, but... That is indeed the case. So now let's take a look at the articulation of General Zod. So starting off with the head, 360 degrees. You can tilt his head to the sides by this much, which is pretty good. What about looking up? Wow, he can't look up at all. Uh, the collar of his uh, suit slash armor gets in the way, so you can't bend his head back at all. But bending downward, you get that much range, which is better than Ultraman. So that's pretty good, but looking up, you can forget about it. Does the diaphragm joint compensate for that if you want to depict him flying? Let me see. Yeah, but you got to really bend his back backwards to get him to appear as if he's looking forward while flying, and it looks really unnatural. So, yeah, that's pretty bad, unfortunately. I mean, I guess if you're someone who is used to heavily customizing figures, you could sort of sand that down. And get rid of that but I'm not gonna do that I'll just live with it as it is uh, I'm not too much of a stickler for that sort of thing but that's an option if you're someone who customizes figures now um, yeah so looking up pretty much not much range unfortunately that collar gets in the way looking down you get a decent amount of range looking to the sides really good amount of range and 360 degrees of rotation now, as you can see, he has these really large shoulder pads on, so you know the articulation at the shoulders is going to be limited. Uh, this is about as far upward as you can bend his, his arms. I unfortunately did not demonstrate that with Ultraman. I always forget to do certain poses here. So as you can see, you can bend his arms upward by that much. Forgive me for not showing you before. There's that. And I didn't. I also didn't demonstrate this. You get that much range, so please forgive me for not showing that to you. So there's that. Let's put him back over here. So back to General Zod. As you can see, the shoulder pads really limit the articulation. Uh, it's actually hard to maneuver the shoulders in order to demonstrate that they have 360 degrees of rotation, but for all intents and purposes, we're going to say no, because even if you can, the armor gets in the way. So that's not really really an option. Uh, it, he does have bicep swivel, so you can rotate his biceps 
as you can see he does have that 360 degrees obviously on both arms uh, he has double jointed elbows which is the case with pretty much all DC most of his figures by Todd McFarlane uh, let's take a look at the, the, the wrists one of the uh, hands came out sorry about that let me see something see which direction they bend along okay there we go so I need to change the direction there we go put the hand back on there we go so this is the default position of his left hand so upwards or should I say inwards is that much now the gauntlet really gets in the way I mean let me take that back off as you can see the gauntlet really protrudes over the range or should I say the length of the wrist peg so the articulation of the wrist is really going to be limited because of the gauntlet so inward you get that much range backwards sorry this is neutral and this is backwards so you do get some range but you would get more if the uh, gauntlet didn't protrude as much as it does over the wrist peg so that's that get that back on same on this side so hold on a second that's that that's that and yeah it's really pretty limited especially since his hand is a fist and the fist doesn't extend past the gauntlet as much as the open hand so yeah pretty limited articulation let's take a look at the diaphragm joint can bend forward that much which is pretty good Bend backwards that much which is also pretty good bent to the sides by that much 360 degrees of rotation so pretty good diaphragm joint what about the waist I can't really manipulate the waist independently of the diaphragm joint because this armor extends over it kind of hard to you know grip it independently of other parts of the figure but you can see that the waist is there so there we go 360 degrees of rotation at the waist uh, you can rotate or should I say bend to the sides by this much if you want to bend backwards you get that much range bend forward you get that much range so pretty good waist articulation now for the legs at the hips you can bend forward by that much pretty much oops my bad Here you go. now for the legs you can bend forward by pretty much 90 degrees but the legs do protrude to the sides a bit pretty good in fact you can go higher than that but the higher you go the more the legs protrude to the sides and if you want to bend the legs backwards you can do so you get a decent amount of range so there's that but the legs do bend to the sides but that's how it looks uh, the knees obviously double jointed pretty good articulation there and for the ankles let's take a look at the ankles it looks like uh, the shin guards are gonna get in the way so let's see this is the default position upwards that much we, we saw a bit better on the Ultraman figure but these gauntlets get in the way this is downward better on the Ultraman figure as well but the back of the shin guards get in the way and we have toe articulation so overall decent articulation uh, not as good as Ultraman but still pretty good especially considering how armored he is so I'm pretty impressed with that unfortunately though the head doesn't really look up to a decent degree and the diaphragm joint it doesn't really help because since the head is so limited in, in regard to looking upwards you have to really bend the diaphragm joint back in order to make him look forward while flying but you have to bend it back to a degree that makes him look unnaturally posed when flying it just looks really weird you know his back is just way too arched in flight but uh, you can achieve something of some sort so uh, you can work with it I guess so let's put him back 
Now we're going to check out the articulation of Martian Manhunter. Starting with the head, we have 360 degrees of rotation. You can tilt the head to the sides by the degree that you see, which is really good. We can tilt the head downwards by this degree, which is also really good. However, we can't tilt upwards by much. Uh, this is the default position, and this is the upwards uh, direction, so obviously not much range, and that's because he has a really short neck. And unfortunately, the diaphragm joint does not bend backwards enough in order to position his head such that his eyes are facing forward as he flies, if you were to put him in a flying position, that is. Now, uh, let's check out the shoulders. The most upper part of the arms does rotate 360 degrees. It's kind of hard to isolate it because it's obstructed by this uh, part of his costume. But as you can see, it can move and it can move 360 degrees. It'd be hard for me to show that, but take my word for it. And that's obviously the case for both sides. He does have a butterfly joint on each side and you can see it, but as is the case with pretty much all Todd McFarlane DC figures, uh, it doesn't really do much in regard to uh, enabling him to bend his arms inward, you know, past uh, the sides of his torso. So the butterfly joints are pretty useless, no offense. As for bending his arms upwards, uh, you can pretty much forget about it because of the upper part of his costume. It really gets in the way. I mean, you know, you can't really bend inwards. There's too much resistance. And uh, as far as bending his, his arms inward, this is as far as you can go. Remember, the butterfly joints don't work too well. So this is the movement that you get. Now, take a look at the biceps. We do have bicep swivel, which is pretty standard on uh, Todd McFarlane, apart from a few exceptions, so pretty good. And he does have double jointed elbows, as you can see. Pretty good. As for the wrists, now here is the default position. And this is his wrist when you bend them inward. Pretty good. And outward, pretty good. For this side, inward. Oh, let me see if I can get that. Holy crap. Gotta get that back on. Give me a second. Okay, I got it back on. Let's try that one more time. I didn't have uh, the hand positioned in the right direction on the peg. All right, there we go. So that's the default position. This is inward, that's outward. So pretty good articulation for the wrists on both sides. Uh, let's take a look at the diaphragm joint. To the sides, you get quite a bit of range. Forward, you get a decent amount of range. Backwards, you get a decent amount of range, but not enough to accommodate a flying pose, so keep that in mind. That's pretty disappointing. Uh, the waist, we get not much movement at the waist. It's pretty stiff. There just isn't much um, movement, unfortunately. You can rotate at the waist. Uh, can you rotate at the diaphragm joint? Yes, you can. Forgot to show you that. Uh, what about bending forward at the waist? You don't get much movement at the waist. It's pretty limited, unfortunately. Uh, now let's take a look at the legs at the hips. I'm going to assume this is limited. And my assumption was wrong. It's not as much range as you get on uh, Ultraman and General Zod, but you do, you do get quite a bit of range. But there is some resistance because uh, this section that goes over his groin area, it's pretty tight. So you can't really bend the legs as much. Bending backwards, you get this much range, pretty good, but there is a bit of resistance by the uh, diaper, if you want to call it that. So that's that. For the knees, standard double joints, which is really good. That's really nice, as usual, for Todd McFarlane. And, wait a minute, let me go back, I forgot to demonstrate this. So yeah, we get quite a bit of range. 
that's pretty good. Yeah, so down to the ankles. We can bend downward by that much, upwards by that much. So pretty good. And of course we have toe articulation, standard for Todd McFarlane figures. So pretty good articulation overall. Uh, not the best, but decent. Certainly not as good as the articulation of Ultraman. His is excellent. And not as good in some regards as the articulation of General Zod. You know, he can't accommodate a flying pose, as I showed you. If we were to bring in General Zod, as you can see, put his head forward that much, bend his back backwards, and you can put him into a flying pose. I mean, it does look a bit awkward because you have to really bend his back backwards, but you can have his head face forward as he's flying. That's the point. You do have that uh, ability, but you don't have that with the Martian Manhunter, unfortunately. So out of the three figures, Martian Manhunter has, I'm going to say, the weakest articulation, which is pretty unfortunate. Now we are going to compare these figures to other figures in the DC Multiverse line by Todd McFarlane. So what I'm going to do is make more space so that I can move them further back and therefore include more figures in the frame. Let me pull this guy out. Uh, this is Raven Spawn, by the way. Another Todd McFarlane figure, but part of his Spawn line, not his DC line. I'll give you guys a good look at him. Pretty cool figure. And I've reviewed this in another video. This is Clayface. Uh, I don't think I really need to move him because I really move Raven Spawn so I can move this out. And let's move these. Okay, so now we can move these guys further back. We can therefore include more figures in the frame for comparison. Let me move this as well. So we're going to bring in, let's see, we'll bring in Aquaman. He's part of the Endless Winter Wave, but he's, I believe he's the only figure in the wave that doesn't come with a, uh, a collect and build part. It's not perfectly leveled, so it's kind of hard to get him to stand on it. Let me just move him to this side. There we go. Less of an issue on this side. So that's how he compares in terms of height. Uh, who else can I bring into the frame? I guess I can bring in Endless Winter Batman. So there's that. I move this. Not a big deal. I can bring in Endless Winter, John Stewart Green Lantern. So there's John Stewart Green Lantern. And who else can I fit in? I guess I can bring in. Endless Winter, Wonder Woman. Question is, is she going to stand or is she going to fall? There we go. Uh, move him back. And that's how these guys and this woman stack up to one another. Pretty good. So now let me pull them out. Now I'm going to bring in... The Frost King, which is the collect and build figure of the Endless Winter Wave. Pretty big guy. And uh, who else can I bring in? I can bring in Black Adam. I'm not sure if he's part of the Endless Winter Wave. Is he? I believe he is. He is part of the Endless Winter Wave. I believe he comes with the legs. So yeah, that's Black Adam of the Endless Winter Wave. And uh, I guess I can also bring in Wally West Flash. 
Uh, so this is not Barry Allen, this is Wally West. Uh, I don't think he's part of any particular wave. So yeah, that's how these guys stack up. So let me pull them out. And let's bring in Death of the Family Joker. Pretty gnarly looking figure. And let's bring in Nightwing from Gotham Knights. And let's bring in Batgirl from Gotham Knights. And Robin from Gotham Knights. So, yeah, that's how these guys stack up. Pretty neat. Pull them out. So is there anyone else who I want to throw in here? Um, it's pretty much all of the newest figures uh, that I have. Let me see who else I have. Who else I want to bring in? Give me a second. Let's bring in Batman of Zer and R. So there's Batman of Zer and R. And now let's bring in the next Batman of Future State. That's literally what he's called, the next Batman. This is Timothy Jace Fox, the estranged son of Lucius Fox. So that's him. And let's bring in Dark Detective Batman of Future State, which is Bruce Wayne. So that's how these guys stack up. I think I can fit one more in the frame. And I guess I'll put in Hazmat Batman. This is the gold label version. Pretty neat light up feature. This is how he stacks up. All right, there we go. It's the lineup. So that's how these guys stack up to one another. I guess I can bring in Flash from Injustice. I can bring in Red Death, which is an alternate version of Bruce Wayne, who is a speedster. I believe he's either from Earth negative 52 or Earth negative 22. Can't recall. One of those two Earths. Here is Barry Allen, The Flash. This is the one that comes in the two-pack with Red Death. Notice he has the uh, sort of angry face expression. And I guess I can bring in Robert Pattinson's Batman. Right? He's leaning a bit, but that's fine. So yeah, I guess this is pretty much it for this comparison. But then again... I think I should compare Ultraman to some other versions of Superman. It would be quite odd for me not to do so. So let me grab some Superman figures. Give me a moment. So here is a lineup of most of my Todd McFarlane DC Multiverse Superman figures. Uh, and this lineup's purpose is to give you guys a visual of how all of these Superman figures stack up particularly how this new Superman figure, Ultraman, an alternate version of Superman, but technically you can say he's Superman, uh, how he stacks up to all of these older Todd McFarlane Superman figures. As you can see, he is taller than all of them, so that's pretty neat, uh, and that should address the issue that a lot of people have had with uh, these other Superman figures in regard to how they scale with uh, most Batman figures by Todd McFarlane, most of them are shorter than their corresponding 
Batman figures. And that's something that a lot of people have complained about. So with this new buck, that shouldn't be a problem. I'm assuming that this new buck will be used to make uh, figures of, of Earth-1 Superman. You know, the proper, regular Superman. And he'll therefore be quite tall. Um, so yeah, that's it for this segment. In fact, that's it for the review as a whole. We're pretty much done at this point. Uh, thanks for watching. Be sure to leave some comments below. And be sure to hit the subscribe button. Peace out.